Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about Torovec, Outglan, uh, or Outglan, uh, depending on your pronunciation. I've done a bit of checking up on uh, the internets uh, about how to pronounce that exactly, and as usual, with the internets, multiple stories, no real idea which is the accurate one. So we'll go with Outglan, um, and this is the second release from Torovec which I also mispronounced when I did the inaugural release video, which I called Tora Vague, very amateur uh, mistake for me to make. Um, so we have the inaugural release that came out earlier this year. Altglan is the second release. Um, bit of information about this in terms of how often it's gonna be available. Uh, so before I tell you what it tastes like, let me give you a bit of background information about the distillery itself. The Torovague Distillery is sited at a converted farmstead on the southeast of the Isle of Skye. It's only the second distillery to be licensed on the island, the first being the very well known and very highly regarded Talisker. The distillery was set up by Marussia Beverages, a drinks distributor who also created the Mossburn brand of independently bottled whiskies, and it's been in operation since January 2017. A team of experienced brewers, distillers and malters were brought on board to mentor a team of nine apprentices, most of whom are from the local area who would then become the distilling team in their own right. The current output is around 1.5 million bottles per year. To put that into context, Talis could produce around 7.5 million bottles per year. Torovec Alt Glan is the second release from the distillery, which will be released across four batches throughout 2021 and 2022. Whereas the inaugural release used only Concerto Barley, with an initial phenol level of 55 to 60 ppm, resulting in a residual level of 16 ppm and maturation in ex-bourbon casks, Alt Glan has a combination of Concerto and Laureate Barley, with an initial phenol level of around 77 ppm, resulting in a residual level of 17 ppm. And maturation takes place in both ex-bourbon casks and casks that have previously aged other whiskies. No colour has been added, no chill filtration took place, and it is bottled at 46% ABV. Okay, so we are looking at, I think it's four batches over the next kind of 18 months or so. Uh, so at the time of recording, uh, 1st of September 2021, uh, this came out three weeks ago from recollection. Um, and we are looking at through 2021 and 2022, I'm sure it's four batches are going to be coming out of this. So whereas the inaugural was, it's a limited amount and that is it. It does sound like there is going to be more of this available and I'm assuming that the flavour profile is going to be the same across the batches of this that come out because we are then due another couple of releases over the next few years until we get to a 10 year old. So as it happens, I actually still have a little bit of the inaugural left. Um, I have a little bit left in this bottle, which was also um, a little sample that I was given as well has been added into it. So I was given one of these for the inaugural and this is what this is all I have of the Outglan. Um, but I do have a little bit of the inaugural left from the New Kids on the Lock tasting that I did a couple of weeks ago. So it actually gives me the opportunity to see whether we have any evolution moving forward from inaugural to Outglan. But let's try the Outglan first. And what I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, to be honest, because I really don't have a lot left. It would be nice to try this on its own and then try it against the inaugural and then have a tiny little bit left when the third release comes out, whose name I absolutely can't remember, to then look at a comparison with that as well. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough left, but we'll see. I'm going to have to just give myself a pretty much a tiny bit. So, okay, it's going to be close. We'll see. So, with the inaugural, if you've not watched the video, I was really, really impressed with the inaugural. And what I liked about it was the, the delicacy of it, the subtlety. It wasn't too in your face. There was a smokiness there. Um, the, the marketing, the packaging does go on about well-tempered peat. And obviously the danger with it being on Sky, the association is with Talisker. Lots of people know what Talisker is. I was about to say everybody knows what Talisker is, but not everybody knows what Talisker is. But Talisker has a really good reputation, a style very much of its own, um, and a lot of people are, are, you know, love it as a, as a distillery and as a whiskey. And the danger was for Torovec was it would, a lot of people would end up comparing it to Talisker and go, oh, well, it's, it's just the same as, or it's not as good or anything like that. And what, what I impressed me about the inaugural was it was forming its own character and its own identity by being not as in your face as Torovec. There was a lovely sweet edge to it. The, t the smokiness was 
was delicate, but it was there. It was obvious. And I, I really, really enjoyed it for something so young. I think they were doing an absolutely fantastic job. So I'm really intrigued to see where we go with the Alk Lounge. So, as I was saying in the blurb earlier, we have a higher PPM to start with in terms of the um, PPM that's in the barley before the process is higher than it was with the inaugural, but the PPM residual is only one PPM higher. So the inaugural was 16 PPM, this is 17 PPM, but we have essentially a higher base to start with before they go through the process. So I'm really intrigued to see is it actually gonna be smokier? Is it gonna be more intense than the inaugural was? So, on the nose. Peppery smoke straight off the bat. Not super intense, but that is the overriding aroma to start with. There's a bit of sweetness underneath. And there's actually, it, now this is going to sound detrimental, and it's not because it's a really intense pungent aroma but uh, I live in kind of the countryside the, my back garden backs onto a lot of fields and we are at end of August first of September harvesting has been done and at the moment um, they are um, turning over the fields with the manure um, that they do to kind of revitalize it and fertilize it and everything like that so Every now and again, you'll get like quite strong whiffs, which are really, really overpowering. But there is also a kind of like, when your wind's kind of blowing in the wrong direction, there is just a slight underlying sharp aroma in the air, which is not unpleasant, but it is pungent and quite full on. And there's actually a, there's an element of that in here, but it's, it's, it's pleasant. It's actually quite comforting in terms of it is kind of a, a field, farmy, countryside, kind of warm, pungent, strong, almost acrid, but acrid in a, in a nice way. It's really, really hard to describe. And it's very evocative, and it's just there underlying that kind of, and it's a peppery smokiness that's there. Again, it does offer that Talisker vibe. Talisker has that very kind of black pepper sea salt, quite intense smokiness, not the medicinal side of Isla. It's more of a, a, a briny, sea, rugged um, smokiness rather than the medicinal TCP that you would associate with the likes of Lafroy, Ardbeg, Lagavulin, and that type of thing. And this has it, and, and from recollection, obviously I've not had the inaugural yet, but from recollection, this feels a bit more full on than the inaugural did, but we'll find out in a second. Let's try it. So initially, you get a, lo a lot of sweetness. Not quite sherbetty, it's more kind of, almost like candy floss. And then the smoke kind of comes through halfway through. It's soft, it, it's, it doesn't taste as intense as it noses, definitely. It kind of comes in a wave. So you start off with, and it really is like a candy floss sweetness. It's a sugary sweetness, almost uh, reminds me a little bit of those um, sugar crystals that you can get on sticks. So you can make them, as you know, your kids can make them. You put string in sugar water and it kind of co coagulates on the string. And then you end up with like sugar crystals that form from that, but it's really sweet. And there is, it really is quite sweet to start with, but then this wave of smoke, and it is a wave, it's not a wasp, it is a, wa a wasp, a waft. Um, it is then a wave of smoke kind of pushes over that sweetness. And it's lovely, again, warming, not acrid, it's not as intense as it is on the nose. Again, peppery, but it's soft pepper. What was almost like peppercorns on the nose and uh, lumps of crunchy sea salt, is much more subdued. It's kind of like a white pepper that's got a fair bit of black pepper also, but finely ground. Sea salt, but you know, gently sprinkled on top. There's a lot going on here. There really is a lot of like sweet and smoke kind of working really, really well together, dancing around each other. And you get both at the same time, but then one moves in front and then the other, but it really kind of ebbs and flows absolutely beautifully. Mm. Again, it's, it's delicate. It's not as intense as you might associate with the likes of Talisker. 
It's still holding back, but it's not holding back in a bad way. It's deliberately holding back the smoke to allow more sweeter flavors to come through. Now, let me just put a tiny, tiny little bit back in to do the comparison. And I'm hoping that I can leave myself just enough just put a little, a little tiny drop more in. Hopefully, I'm gonna hang on to that. I'm gonna put some parafilm around it because we're looking at well over a year before the next batch comes out. So I'm gonna put some parafilm around that. And then with any luck in about 18 months to maybe two years time, you might be watching a video where I'm cracking this open. That is of course, if I'm still in business and still operational. Fingers crossed that is the case. So let me get the inaugural open and we will do a comparison between the two. Now there might be some of you going, oh, well you need some water and you need to be swelling your mouth out and you need to be cleansing your palate and all that lot. I've got better things to do with my life. This is not a scientific experiment. This is just to try and give you an indication of if you've had a bottle of the uh, inaugural, which was fantastic, and you were thinking about getting the outglan, to be honest, if you're thinking about getting the outglan, it's probably too late. Um, I've sold out. Um, the bottle that I have here that is unopened is actually earmarked for a customer. Um, I have a, a, a mailing list of people that um, I get in touch with to say, I'm getting these um, in, are you interested? And they basically all go, all went. So if you are looking to get um, any of these limited editions, likes of Arden Merck, well, Arden Merck and I've still got left, but Rase, Taravec, Blanton's, all of these rare ones, get on my mailing list. I will let people on the mailing list know when things are coming out and then I will do a pre-order with those people before I go into social media if I have any other stock left. So that's the inaugural, that's the uh, outglan. So now this, you might be looking at that bottle going, well, there's not a lot left in it. You know, there's a lot of air in there. It might have evaporated. This has been pretty well sealed left well alone and it's only been two weeks. So if there is any kind of like change in the bottle, I don't think it's going to be particularly massive. But on the nose straight away, instantly, the out gland has more intensity of smoke. On the inaugural, it's really gentle and really subtle. It's there, but nowhere near as much as the out gland. Much more peppery on there. Pepper, salt, Again, that kind of like acrid farm fields turning over manure. I don't, I don't want to say manure on fields because that really gives a horrible impression, but it's, it's evocative of that for me. So as a, on a personal level, that actually means quite a lot because it is really evoking me walking the dog around the fields at the end of summer as they're turning over the fields in preparation for a new planting season. So actually it's evoking a personal reaction in me. It might not work for you. And to be honest, if you're not aware of that smell, if you live in a city or you know, there's no fields around you or, or whatever, you're probably not gonna get that and you'll probably associate that with the intensity of the smokiness that's in there. It's a very, very individual kind of note on the nose that I'm picking up because I'm at the moment dealing with it they're dealing with it. That's what's going on in my life at the moment, walking the dog through the fields as they're doing it. If you don't know what that note is, it will just kind of fold into the pepper, salt, smoky intensity of this whiskey. But it's there, and much, much more so. This almost comes across as there's not much to it compared to that. This definitely has more intensity, depth, complexity on the nose. On the palate, now the smoke comes through on the palate, on the inaugural. It's a little bit saltier. It's not quite as peppery, but the sweetness is there. That candy floss, sugar crystal, whatever the word is for that sweet, the sweetness is there. And the smoke then, so the sweetness is there at the start, the smoke comes through. It's not quite as heavy. It's not quite as peppery. It's like I say, it's more salty and it's not an intense sea salt. It's more of a table salt almost. Salt touch of vinegar that you'd put on your fish and chips. Whereas the Al Glan is much more, I mean, it really is a marked difference. There is a extra dimension of peppery smoke on the Al Glan that is not there on the inaugural. That it's both are very, very good, but there is very much a progression. Now, you might have seen the recent Arden Merkin video I did where we looked at the batch three compared to the batch five, and there was a difference between the three and the five. The five had more weight to it. 
but it wasn't a massive difference. It was there, it was obvious, but it wasn't, oh blimey, that's really different. This is not, again, massively different, but this is more so of a change in terms of flavor profile. This is starting to get closer to the style of Talisker. And my worry, my worry for, for Torovec is, we've gone from here, which is sweet, the, the smoke is there, but as they say, well-tempered, it's subdued, it's providing a, a, an extra dimension, it's providing change, it's, it's, you know, this is, the out gland is starting to go, the smoke element, the smoke and peat element is more pronounced and it's becoming a dominating character. My worry for them is this is, moves towards the Talisca style. And when the third release comes out, if they go more intense than this, it will be compared to Talisker. And it will essentially become, it's that Sky Distillery that tastes like Talisker. And what I liked about the inaugural, when they launched it, was it was not doing that. It was not, if, if, this, I, if this was the inaugural, the Out Glan, I would be saying at the time, it's a fantastic whiskey. It's absolutely brilliant. I love the sweetness on it. I love the interplay between the sweet and smoke. But I worry that it's a lot of people are gonna instantly go, oh, well, it tastes like Talisker. It tastes like almost like Talisker's younger brother. The inaugural when it came out was, this is not a Talisker. This is not trying to be Talisker. It's being its own thing. This is starting to move in that direction. And it, it, the risk that they run is that people coming to Torovec as a whiskey drinker are going to try this and if it moves even further in that kind of peppery smoky direction with the ongoing releases and we get to a Torovec 10 year old and it's actually more intense than this there'll be a lot of people that will try it for the first time and almost confuse it to Talisker and almost go oh, oh is this that distillery on Sky that's you know is this Talisker's second distillery or something like that it, it just my worry is that they lose their identity because of the association with the established distillery that's all, already on the island. And I would not want that to happen. I really want them to stand on their own two feet and have people aware of them as they are, rather than endlessly comparing it to the other distillery on the island. I really hope that's not the case. That is, that's my only concern. Because in terms of the whiskey, it's absolutely brilliant. Again, which one do I prefer? kind of depends on the mood. I quite like the subdued nature of the inaugural, but I do like the more intense nature of the Out Glan. I love the interplay of the sweetness and the smoke, and that's what you get through both of them. The intensity of the smoke there is different. Subdued, more intense. With both, you have that sweet, almost kind of candy floss, sugary, it's a lovely kind of you say sugary and, and it gives connotations of being like sickly sweet. This is not, this is this is um, like a, a kind of like a fresh, natural sugar. I'm not really sure I'm making much sense on that. But the sugary note in there is, is very much like sugar candy in a pure form. It's not sickly at all. And the interplay between that sweet and that smoke, dancing around each other, is absolutely delicious. It's, it's almost mouth-watering. It works absolutely brilliantly. Oh. Great stuff, absolutely great stuff. Price point. I think is spot on. Um, so we're looking at, was it $14,999? Um, and I, I think that's spot on. Um, I do fortunately have a bit of the inaugural. So what I'm probably gonna do is decant that into a smaller bottle, parafilm that, parafilm the little bit of outgland that I've got, and then we will hang on until the third release comes out, and then hopefully we'll do a run. Now, I, unfortunately, I don't think I've got enough when the fourth comes out and the 10 year old come out to get through that, but we'll see. Um, but overall, again, brilliant. Really interesting to see the evolution, and it will be interesting to see how the evolution continues. Do they go more full on with the smoke, with the third release, or do they rein it back in a little and kind of pull that back and get closer to the inaugural? But as a house style, if you, and I don't want to say it, but it seems like an obvious thing to say for people that really aren't sure. If you like Talisker, you will like this. Easy as that. If you like Isla whiskies, very good chance you're gonna like this. But if you like sweeter whiskies as well, 
you know, the inaugural was a really good introduction to peaty whiskey as well. This might be a little bit too intense for, for people really dipping their toe in the water, but it's brilliantly balanced, lovely complexity. Again, I'm still amazed with these new distilleries, Rase, Ardner Merkin, uh, Lindor's Abbey, Torovec, the youthfulness of this spirit, but the complexity that they're achieving at such a young age already, it just bodes so well for how it will progress through the years. You know, these 10 year old, when these new distilleries hit 10 year old, eight year old, 10, 15, my word, they are gonna be absolutely fantastic stuff. So, unfortunately, not available through the website, www.spiritspecialist.com, because I've sold out. However, there is, new batches going to be available of Outglan. I don't know when the next one is. I think it's in a few months. I've got a feeling it's like every quarter, but don't quote me on that. So if you would like some, get in touch, get on the mailing list. I'm probably gonna actually run a spreadsheet where I'll have some advanced interest for when the next batch comes out. And then it just depends on how many I can get, um, whether I'm allowed to get any at all, um, but, if you do want one, get in touch. I'll put you on the list and we'll see what we can do. Um, so that's me done. If you can get a bottle, get a bottle. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it just, unfortunately, might not be for me. But you know, it's not like I've got kids to feed or anything. Um, so, me done. I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.